Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to work with buttons on your Java Discord bot using the Java Discord API. Last episode I showed you guys how to use modals, but you may have not seen that episode. They're not really meant to be watched in any particular order when it comes to this kind of stuff. But if you've seen that episode on modals, then you can use that knowledge to know how to do buttons. They're pretty much the exact same. So if you haven't seen it, then it's okay. You'll still understand what's going on. I'll explain what's going on. So we're gonna add a new listeners here, uh, listeners uh, class called button listeners. And a button is essentially a button that you can add onto messages. It's really that simple. So the game plan here to demonstrate how buttons work is we're gonna make a simple uh, piece of functionality that whenever someone sends a bad word into a message, the Discord bot will recognize that, and then it's going to send a report to a staff channel so that the staff member can optionally, you know, remove that message or do something like that. So the report will have two buttons, one for remove and then one for ignore. And so if they click remove, then it's going to remove that message that had the bad word. And yeah, so that's how we're going to do that. So inside of here, we're going to need a message listener. So code override methods, and we're going to, oops, we need to do extends listener adapter, don't we? Listener adapter from JDA. Now we'll do code override methods. And let me find the one for messages. So let's go ahead and start by making a list of bad words that we need to search for. So private string, private final string array, bad words. And some bad words like wiener. Those are the baddest words I can think of. They're really just really naughty words. And we don't want people to send those words on our server, right? So to check to see if someone sent one of those words inside the message that they sent, we're going to, every time we receive a new message with this listener here, we're going to loop through all of our bad words. So for string bad word out of bad words. So for each bad word, we're going to do if event dot get message dot get content raw gets content raw. That gets the actual string of the message, the content of the message. And then if it contains the bad word that we're looping over, then it's a bad message. So what we want to do then is send a report to the staff channel or whatever channel. So first we'll just send event dot get channel. So the channel that the message was sent in and then do send message. You said a bad word. I am telling on you. Now we want to send a message in the channel that we want to report messages to. So we're going to do text channel. Uh, report channel, or how about staff channel is equal to, make sure you import text channel. And to find a channel by its ID, we're going to do events.getjda.get text channel by ID. And so we're going to go to staff here, right click it and do copy ID, paste this in, and that should grab it if it exists with, if there's a channel with that ID, all right? So we'll say if staff channel is not equal to null, and we're going to send a message in that channel, which is the report. Now we already know how to send a message. You can simply do staff channel dot send message and type it in there. But this is gonna be more complex because we wanna add buttons to it, right? So when you have more complex messages with many lines and lots of detail and buttons and other cool stuff, then you would want to use a message builder. So we're gonna do message message is equal to, import message by the way, boom, new message builder and then we want to append stuff to this. So you, it's essentially just like a regular Java string builder, except that it accepts other cool stuff. So let's go ahead and craft it. So we're gonna say something like, Billy Bob said a bad word, click the button below to remove it. So to get the name of the person who said the bad word, we're going to get the name of the person who triggered this event here. So event.getmember.getEffective name. That will just get their Discord name. And then we'll append a second message onto that. We'll say, said a bad word click the button below to remove it. There we go. And then set action rows is how you add buttons. Just like uh, if you saw the modal episode, whenever you're adding text inputs to your modal, then you use the action rows method, the same method here. But we actually need some buttons to add to this, right? So let's go ahead and show you how you can create some buttons here. So we're going to do button. Um, we'll say remove button is equal to, import button by the way, boom, uh, button dots, and then you have these options here. So you may have seen buttons in Discord, maybe you haven't, 
uh, these methods here correspond to the different colors of the different buttons that you can choose, okay? So you have a danger button, which is just a red button. We have primary, which is blue. We have secondary, which is, I think, maybe gray uh, or yellow, maybe. And then we have success, which is green. So, yeah. So these correspond to what, whatever color you want. And you can also provide an emoji if you want to, which is pretty cool. And then we have link. If you've ever worked with Bootstrap, by the way, these these names here might kind of make sense because when you're coloring stuff or whenever you're making buttons in Bootstrap, you actually have these types of classes here that correspond to the colors of the buttons. But anyway, with that said, because this is a remove button, let's do it as danger because we want it to be red. And now we need to give our button a unique identifier so that when we handle the interaction, when someone clicks on it, we know what button it's referring to. So we'll just call this, um, we'll give it an ID of remove dash message. And then we can either give it an emoji or a label. So the label is just, you know, what text appears on the button. Uh, so we'll say remove message. Now let's go ahead and add this button to the message. So we're going to go to set action rows down here and do action row dot of, and then pass in the button that we just created. And then we're going to build this message builder into an actual message that we can send and then send the message in our staff channel. Staff channel dot send message dot remove uh, message. There we go, and then queue it. And now we have a simple listener here that will listen for messages that are sent on our server. And then if it contains one of our bad words, it will send a new message into that channel saying you said a bad word. And then it'll send another message into the staff channel um, that is built using a message builder that contains a button that says remove message. All right. And let's go ahead and see how this works. But first we need to register the button listeners here. So Discord bot. And then just ignore all this other stuff here. That's just for the modal episode. So we're going to add a new listener here. New button listeners. Now let's reload the bot. And we should see uh, this functionality now in play. So if we go in and say a bad word here, we'll say, I am so freaking freaking mad. Frick is one of our bad words, right? I'm so freaking mad. It says, you said a bad word. I'm telling on you. Then if we go to staff. It says... Cody Simpson said a bad word, click the button below to remove it. And that's how a button looks like, okay? Pretty cool, looks really nice. So if we click it, nothing's gonna happen. It just stays like that because this is also an interaction, right? It says the interaction failed because we are not, we don't have a listener for that button interaction that will process it and reply to it like we do with like maybe a slash command or a modal interaction, for example. So let's go back to button listeners and make a, uh, a listener here that will listen for that button click interaction, all right? So we're going to go down here and do code override methods and find the one for button. Here it is on button interaction. And now we want to first check to see which button was clicked. So if event dot get button dot get ID dot equals, and then what we named the button or the ID that we gave the button was remove dash message. So remove dash message. So now we need a way to have this remove the message that was sent before that has a bad word. So how can we take this message, this you know report here, click this button here, and then have it remove the, the bad word message? How do we do that? That's a little tricky because we have to convert, we have to somehow transfer that data to know which one we're talking about. So we're going to do it in a little hacky way. We're going to take the ID of this message here and then include it into the report. So when we click the button here, it's just going to grab that ID from the report and then go here and then delete it. So let's try that out. So we'll go back to here. On the end of this, we're going to say click the button below to remove it. And then we're going to add, we're going to append onto that message ID. And then we'll say um, event.get message ID. And that's it. So hopefully now we can grab that from here. It should just be the last thing. So we're going to do event dot get message. And this message here will specifically be the one that has the button tied to it, right? Because when we click the button, the button's going to be on a message. So when we click the button, this message here that's referring to, it's going to refer to the message that the button is on. So when we do get message, it's going to refer in this case to this. So now we can do event dot get message. And this refers to the message that was the report. So inside of here, because that's the message that the button is on. So we want to take that message, get the content of it and get the last ID from that. So event dot get content raw dot um, split. We're going to split it by spaces and then get the last one somehow. So uh, let's think about this. How do we want to do this? So say string content. 
Okay, and then we'll say string message ID is equal to content dot uh, content dot length minus one to get the last one. Now we'll reply to the button for verification, so event dot reply. And of course, the reason we can do this is because the button interaction is an interaction, and you have to reply to an interaction to complete the interaction. So event dot reply, pass in a message, and we'll just pass in message ID message ID. And we'll just have this so that we know if it's uh, actually grabbing the ID or not to know if it's working. So we'll say um, cheese poop sauce. It says you said a bad word, I'm telling on you. Staff, it says Cody Simpson said a bad word. Click the button below to remove it, message ID. And then here's the ID, click this. And there we go, it says message ID 9745922. Um, like I said, kind of a hacky way of doing it, but that does work very well. That's just how we wanted to transfer the data. So with that ID, we can now grab this me message that was sent with the bad word and remove it. So now we need to figure out how to get the message via its ID. And we actually have to do that via the text channel. So we would need to build in another way to also provide the text channel to this. But just for now, we're going to hard code it. I don't really care about you know the logic of removing the message. I just really care about showing you how buttons work. So as long as I get that across mission success, so what I'm going to do is just copy this ID here. So get text channel by ID. And now we can do delete message by ID and then pass in message ID for that. And boom. So that's how you can do that. And then now we'll just reply with message deleted. Message deleted. Okay. So now let's reload this and see if it works. Awesome. So now we're going to say bad word, bad word, poop sauce. And then we'll go here, remove message. It says message deleted. And that's how you know the button worked because we clicked it, it completed the interaction, and then it actually did what we told it to do. It removed the message, so it's no longer there. And we can add another button onto this if we want to. Let's, add, let's have a button called ignore alert, so it removes this message. So let's go here to this, and we'll do button dot ignore alert is equal to button dot and we'll have secondary ignore alert, ignore alert. And then we'll add that onto here. So action row dot of ignore alert. And we'll go down here now and do else if event dot get button dot get ID dot equals ignore alert. And this one's more simple. All we have to do is get the message that the button was clicked on and then remove that. So event dot get message dot remove delete yeah there we go delete and that's it that should do it and then we can also reply to the interaction so message deleted how about we'll say alert deleted there we go and we'll also make that ephemeral how about that true all right cool so that should do that let's see what that looks like so we'll say bad word. Um, frick, frick, frick. Okay, it says Cody Simpson said a bad word. Click the button below to remove it. Message ID, blah, blah, blah. So we'll say ignore alert. And it removes it. And it says alert deleted. Awesome. And it says only you can see this. Great. Because it's ephemeral. And you may have noticed that the buttons appeared on two separate lines. You can actually make them appear on both lines. On the single line, rather. By doing this. So if we go back to up here. Instead of having it. Um, as action row dot of and then comma action row dot of separately, we can just pass in ignore alerts into that same action row. Because that kind of makes sense, right? It's a single row, action row. So if we just have two rows, then that's two lines of buttons. But if we have a single row, a single action row, then that's then that's going to be one line with both buttons on it. Alright, so just reload this and I'll prove that to you. So say poop sauce. Cody Simpson said a bad word, blah, 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 and then it has both messages, or both buttons rather, on the same line, which looks much better than before. Click that, then it's deleted, good, and then it click that, and now that's deleted as well. So pretty cool stuff. And there you go, that's how you can make buttons in your Java Discord bot using the Java Discord API. Adding buttons to your bot, adding button capability to your bot is gonna make your Discord servers way more cool. You can do really cool features, and you can uh, make some really cool stuff. So if you make anything cool with this, then feel free to share it inside of our Discord server, post a video or something like that, or a picture. But just as a recap here, the way that it works is you create buttons and then you add it onto a message. 
And then whenever that button is clicked, it makes a new button interaction. Just like when we do slash commands, it's a slash command interaction. And then you have to reply to that interaction to properly uh, process it. And then you're figuring out which button is which just by checking the ID of the button. So the ID is also something that you set when you create the button itself, okay? And don't forget all of the code for this episode is in the description below. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the description below, I'll leave a link to the code for this episode so you can check it out. You can bookmark it, come back to it later. If you forget any concepts or you just want to review the concepts I taught in this video, I'll mark everything up with comments so you can come back and read the code without having to rewatch the video, although your reviews are greatly appreciated. So yeah, I'll leave a link for that in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And uh, another thing is I'll leave a link to our Discord server. It's a big community for programmers, so you can ask for help on your programming projects if you're stuck on something, or maybe you can get some new friends. If you don't have any friends, there's lots of people here. It's growing really fast. You can get, uh, you can find lots of people who are passionate about the same things as you. For example, if you like Minecraft uh, Spigot development, uh, you can find people, lots of people who like that. If you like C++, you like Java, if you like web development, it's a really, really big programming community. So uh, feel free to join. There's a link for that in the description below. And the last thing I want to tell you is that if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month and you can cancel at any time. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server like you see right here on the side, YouTube members, and also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't, that's okay too. Um, I really just uh, appreciate you watching the video anyway. And uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like if you want to see more. Subscribe and peace.